Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 State of the City Address. This is your mayor, Tasha Serta, and I want to thank all of you for joining us for this presentation. I'm delighted to be here tonight to share highlights of the past year as we all look forward to a more promising 2021. The past 15 months have been some of the most challenging times in our city. Who could have imagined the hardships our residents and businesses would have experienced as the coronavirus spread throughout our community, our nation, and our world? No one could have imagined the mental, physical, and financial impact this pandemic would have brought to all of us. As we see the light at the end of the tunnel, I'm proud of our city for overcoming this hardship and becoming a stronger city and an even closer community. Seeing our residents come together to fight against the pandemic was truly remarkable. We should all take pride in the resilience of our great city, and I'm especially proud of our city for coming together to fight and overcome this pandemic. Gardena adapted rapidly to the pandemic by instituting policies to keep our community safe and support the needs of our residents. I want to first begin by introducing our partners. They are truly the key to our success. So let's start with our elected officials, or what I like to call the team. Mayor Pro Tem, Rodney Tanaka, he joined our city council in 2017. Next, we have council member Marky e. Henderson. He joined the city council in 2015. We have council member Art Kaskanian. He joined the city council in 2017 as well. And council member Paulette Francis, the newest member of our team. She joined the city council in March of 2020. We also have a city treasurer, Ingrid Sukiyama, currently serving her fourth term as city treasurer. And last but not least, our city clerk, Mina Semenza. She is serving her third term. We also have eight commissions in our city, and they include Planning and Environmental Quality Commission, our Human Services Commission, the Gardena Beautification Committee, Gardena Rent Mediation Board, Recreation and Parks Commission, Gardena Youth Commission, Senior Citizens Commission, and the Gardena Economic Business Advisory Council, also known as GBAC. They're comprised of residents and business owners. These members are appointed by the city council. We appreciate each and every one of them for their support. I also wanna take a moment to highlight our clubs and organizations that make Gardena the best city in the South Bay. During these difficult times, they continue to work diligently to help us help our most vulnerable groups. So I have a long list here to mention, but bear with us here because I wanna make sure we recognize all of them. We have ADAP, GDAP. Carson Dominguez Gardena Rotary Club, the Community Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT, Chamber of Commerce, our Symbidian Club, El Camino Lions Club, Friends of the Willows Wetland Preserve, Friends of the Library, the Cinco de Mayo Committee, the Gardena Boys and Girls Club, the Gardena Elks Lodge number 1919, the Gardena Evening Optimist Club, the Gardena Masonic Center, the Gardena Police Foundation, Gardena Valley JCI, Gardena Valley Lions Club, Gardena VFW, the MLK Cultural Committee, the Kiwanis Club of Gardena, local churches, neighborhood watch members, as well as our second time around senior club, our Sister City Association Club, our South Bay Korean American Senior Center, our South Bay Workforce Investment Board, the YMCA of Carson and Gardena, and last but certainly not least, our COPCAT. Our team includes contractor services, one that many of you may have seen around, and that is LA County Fire Department. We have two fire stations, station number 158, located next door to City Hall, and station 159, located on 135th Street. These two stations are manned 24 seven to respond to any emergencies at any given moment. In addition to being able to handle any disaster, they are very active in the community as far as engagement. Thank you to Assistant Fire Chief Scott Hill for your continued support and focus to serve our community. So let's talk about the countless things our employees did to continue to preserve the health of our employees, visitors, and residents. First up is our elected and administrative offices, comprised of administrative support staff, city clerk's office, the city manager's office, emergency management, human resources, legal services, and risk management. At this point, I would like to ask our city manager, Clint Osorio, to discuss the activation of our emergency operations center.
Clint joined the city of Gardena in 2014 as our chief financial officer, quickly moving up to director of administrative services and then assistant city manager. In December of 2019, he was selected as our city manager. Clint has over 15 years of municipal management experience and has been instrumental in our city's financial success. So at this time, I'd like to bring Clint Osorio up. Thank you, Mayor Serta. Before I begin, I want to thank each and every one of you, our community members, for your continued support and understanding during this very challenging time. It's not easy to stand by and listen to our health officer's orders of staying home, not being able to enjoy life and each other, but please know that these things are in place to ensure your safety. Because at the end of the day, our jobs as city officials is to ensure your safety and security, which is why, at the beginning of this pandemic, the city activated our Emergency Operations Center, or EOC in short. The single most important function of the EOC is to save lives. Nothing matters more. The purpose of the EOC is to centralize command and control over a state of emergency. We streamline processes that normally goes through red tape, which takes days, and turn it into instant access to information and resources. For example, when our local hospitals like Gardena Memorial were inundated with patients needing care because their fever is so high and they couldn't breathe, or needed more resources such as nurses, doctors, equipment, and PPEs, we talked to them twice daily to ensure they received the help that they needed. We coordinated with LA County and the state to bring in additional resources such as personnel and equipment, all in an effort to save lives. To keep the public informed, we utilized a regional alert and warning system called Alert South Bay. This enabled us to provide timely updates to our residents and businesses through text messages and emails. We will be using the same technology to inform all of you about our reopening efforts. We also partnered with organizations like 360 Clinic to provide critical services such as COVID-19 testing to the public, which are currently operating as we speak at Raleigh Park. We planned for vaccination rollouts and worked with LA County DPH to establish a vaccination site in our city. Speaking of equipment, supplies, and PPEs, I want to thank our community partners for donating much-needed life-saving supplies. We received thousands of face masks, hand sanitizers, cleaning equipment, food, and water. This is a great example of how a community can get together and really make a difference. I also want to thank our city departments for doing their part in helping save lives. We reassigned 16 of our valuable employees from different departments to staff the EOC so we can do all these great things and make a difference. I want to thank our staff for working through this pandemic, our recreation and human services for putting on special programs, all the while practicing social distancing, our police department for providing safety and security, our bus lines for providing much needed transportation free of charge during this pandemic, our public works department for maintaining our streets and neighborhoods, our community development department for processing permits and applications, and admin services for making sure our bills are paid. You know, our doors may have been closed, but we have been here all this time. We have always been here for you. Lastly, I want to thank our mayor, Dasha Serda, and the rest of our city council for their leadership during this time. Mayor Serta will go through our accomplishments for the past year, but none of these would have been made possible without their support. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and please enjoy the rest of our State of the City update by our Mayor, Tasha Serta. Thank you, Clint. I had the opportunity to visit the ELC when it was activated, and I was truly impressed by the collaboration of our city departments to quickly launch one of the most impressive emergency operations centers in the South Bay. We were the only fully staffed ELC in the South Bay at the start of the pandemic. Our city clerk's office was an integral part to ensuring transparency of city government. They adapted to virtual meetings to ensure the health and safety of our elected officials, staff, and citizens. They were also responsible for coordinating one of the most unique and truly historic elections, securing three vote centers and two vote by mailboxes that were open 24 seven allowing our residents the ability to cast their votes as early as October 5th of 2020. 
our city experienced an increase in, over, in overall percentage of voter turnouts, going from 19.5% in 2017 election to 34.83% in our 2020 election. If that wasn't enough, they successfully transitioned to a new agenda management system to go paperless. Next, our human resources and risk management division also had a shift in gears to adjust to social distancing practices and a new work environment that they never imagined. The HR team did an amazing job developing, developing protocols, working with labor groups as the city navigated through furloughs and layoffs while providing support to staff to stay productive, motivated, engaged, and connected. Even as we were seeing a drop in COVID-19 cases, they were focused on providing vaccination information and constantly updating guidelines to continue to support city staff. The Economic Development Division also served as a pillar to support local businesses by providing resources and vital information to businesses to ensure that they remain in compliance with LA County health orders. In addition to providing PPEs and other safety supplies to our businesses, the Economic Development Division spearheaded the Small Business Assistance Program to help small businesses that were struggling financially. In between providing resources to businesses, they also held Gardena Restaurant Week and created a video series to highlight some of the finest restaurants. Our team is focused on assisting our local businesses and we encourage you to continue to support our small businesses and shop local. Our team highlights a new business each week, shares stories and updates them on Discover Gardena, Instagram, and other social media sites. Led by Chief Financial Officer Ray Beeman, the Administrative Services Department handles community services, contract management, financial services, information systems, and purchasing. The COVID-19 pandemic forced business closures, which raised serious questions concerning the effects of the city's revenue stream. Through the leadership of our Chief Financial Officer, we were able to take some very important measures to maintain all services the public expects the city to provide. One of the most notable and truly impressive is the refinancing of the city's pension obligation. Securing the pension obligation bond effectively saved the taxpayers of Gardena $51 million over the next 19 years. The admin team also spearheaded the city's strategic plan update. The plan focused on excellent customer service, creating a vibrant, healthy, and safe community, and a continued focus on public infrastructure while being fiscally responsible. In addition to these amazing achievements, the admin team also waived convenience fees to make it easier for businesses and residents to pay for city services. This was just one small example of helping our community through the pandemic. Our community development department, led by interim director Greg McLean, is responsible for building services, business licenses, and special permits and planning. During the pandemic, community development migrated many of their services from in-person to virtual, including plan checks, permit applications, business licensing. Despite a reduction in the staff, the Community Development Department remained busier than ever. Our great partnership with the Economic Development was the creation of the Outdoor Dining Program, which allowed restaurants to open and serve customers safely. They also assisted our casinos to reopen as outdoor gambling was approved by the state and county. I was impressed by our businesses' creativity to make their outdoor spaces so inviting and enjoyable. Now to one of my favorite parts of the presentation and back by popular demand. I love seeing the before and after shots of new businesses and homes that are popping up and some projects to look forward to in 2021 to 2022. The community development team accomplished so much in the past 15 months despite the shutdown. Raising Canes on Redondo Beach next to Target is scheduled to open this summer. The 3,000 square foot drive through will surely draw a crowd with its famous chicken fingers and dipping sauce. Malia Townhomes, located just east of Western on 178th Street, has 114 townhomes currently under construction. These homes are beautiful, and if you have a chance, you should stop by and check out their four distinct floor plans. Normandy Place, located at 157th and Normandy, will be a wonderful improvement to this area. Currently under planning review, this will have 30 more residential units. The Olson Project, located at 141st Street, will bring 50 new townhomes to Gardena. I especially like the fact that they will be planting over 100 trees on the property, and I'm excited to see the final product. After many years of very little development, we see a change on the Rosecrans Avenue corridor. 
We are very excited to see these new projects start construction and hope to attract more businesses to the area. Walnut Place will include 49 new townhomes and three live-work units. Rosecrans Place on Van Ness and Rosecrans will include 113 new solar-powered electric homes with 15 live-work units. They are all currently under construction and almost completely sold out. KB Townhomes, located on Rosecrans and Ramon, currently under construction includes 62 new townhomes. And on Crenshaw, this project recently approved by the City Council is definitely an exciting one. This complex will consist of 265 residential units, including a new digital board. This location is ideal as it's located minutes from the transit station. Great things are happening in Gardena. The Public Works Department consists of building maintenance, engineering, landscaping, and tree maintenance, park maintenance, sidewalk and street maintenance, and our Handy Workers program. Public Works staff continue to maintain our streets and provide other services by following physical distancing guidelines. More impressively, they did it without the support of a director. After a long search, we recently hired Alan Rigg. Alan is a seasoned Public Works director who began his career while uh, in the private sector, where he designed large subdivisions and municipal infrastructures. We are excited to have Alan join our team and look forward to even more exciting changes. The Public Works Department has always been busy providing essential services to our community, but the COVID-19 pandemic has given the departments, along with every other department, even more to do. Throughout this pandemic, the department has had to maintain a high level of service delivery while navigating new challenges such as the reduction in staff and new COVID-19 compliances. These challenges require the department to innovate and to adapt to the rapidly evolving pandemic. While remaining flexible and resilient, working creatively and collaboratively and focusing our efforts and resources on the city's most pressing needs. During this time, they completed 10 CIP projects totaling $5 million and have 13 future projects valued at $10 million. Most recently, they completed the Raleigh Park Auditorium HVAC and roof project and installed a new shade structure at Moss Fukai, which should be ready this summer. The crew also repaired 3,500 square feet of sidewalk and cleaned over 131,000 linear feet of sewers and 360 linear feet of storm drains, all while responding to over 11,000 Gardena Direct requests, which include sidewalk, street, public space maintenance, and much, much more. The Recreation and Human Services Division, led by Stephanie Santin, currently consists of code enforcement and animal services, emergency and family services, facilities, family child care program, recreation programs, senior and youth services, and special events. During the pandemic, the Recreation and Human Services Department was able to restructure recreation programs, the use of park playgrounds and fields for public use as their tier restrictions change. Uh, they are working diligently to bring back programs and open recreation facilities as we approach our busiest season. This year, due to the changes in staffing, the department took over the day-to-day -day supervision of code enforcement and animal services. Their focus was to continue to maintain the highest level of quality of life while providing support to other departments by conducting COVID-19 business compliance checks, park patrols, and reunite furry friends with their family members. Also with the help of admi administrative services, they signed a new agreement with, our, with SPCLA to provide sheltering services to our community while saving the city an estimated $180,000 this upcoming year. Despite the reduction in staff, the division has done an amazing job assisting our community. Some of the most notable achievements from the Recreation Division was the support they provided to our community in partnership with the city departments and local businesses. They held over 60 events to provide food, safety supplies, and provide families an opportunity to celebrate holidays safely. Some of the most notable events included the Halloween route, curbside Santa, and the bunny stampede. We had thousands of visitors drive by. They also continued to provide after-school programs and camps to help parents and children have a sense of normalcy during this time. Did I mention this year was also a special year since it kicked off the city's 90th anniversary? Our Human Services Division also stepped up to help our most vulnerable population by hosting several food drives, coordinating food distribution, and administering the CARES funding for rental, 
utility, and nutrition assistance. Our Senior Bureau worked miracles to convert our Congregated Meals program to a 100% Meals on Wheels program at the start of the pandemic, despite losing all of its volunteers. They packed and delivered over 136,400 meals to our seniors, which was a 206% increase over the previous year. In addition to providing meals and emergency meals, supplies such as water, toilet paper, they also were able to schedule over 600 vaccination appointments for community members. This was especially helpful for seniors who did not have access to a computer to sign up in the early 2021. Our child care program also continued to impress us by providing support to providers so they could keep their doors open and help essential workers keep working. They transitioned their compliance efforts from in-person to Zoom to ensure the child care environment was safe. They also successfully completed their annual review and were selected to be an example for a federal review. Great work by all involved. As if all this wasn't enough, the Recreation Human Services Department worked together to complete the census count. They worked together to raise awareness about the importance of the census and had a completion rate higher than both Los Angeles County and the state of California. This information is useful to determine our city's fair share of federal funding spent on schools, hospitals, roads, public works, and other vital programs. Our transportation department. G-Trans, led by Director Ernie Crespo, is comprised of admin, Administrative Maintenance, Operations, and Special Transit Service Division. We are one of several cities lucky enough to have our own transportation department. During the pandemic, they were instrumental in helping our communities safely travel to their destination. Our transportation department never stopped service and transitioned quickly to meet the needs of their riders. Some of the changes they made to keep both passengers and staff safe was to change to rear door boarding. We provided free trips and installed barriers to ensure passengers traveled safely. During this busy time, they also purchased and replaced 18 gas hybrid buses with CNG buses to reduce their carbon footprint and continue to support the city's focus on going green. G-Trans also celebrated a milestone year. 80 years of providing affordable transportation to our community is such a remarkable accomplishment, and I look forward to many years to come. Upcoming projects, G-Trans continues its focus on providing real-time information to its passengers and is getting ready to launch its AVL GPS bus tracking system. This will allow passengers to receive updates related to their bus and help ensure they get to their destination on time. They also have started to deploy smart trash receptacles at key locations within our city. I'm excited to continue our focus on sustainability and provide our residents a way to easily recycle. If you haven't seen them, stop by our city hall complex and check them out. Also, we are working on exciting upgrades to our transportation facility. I can't wait to see the final project. Now I'm gonna ask Chief Safel to come up and talk about our wonderful police department. Chief Mike Safel has over 28 years of police experience at the Gardena Police Department. He has had a wide range of assignments and roles, including patrol, detective, narcotics, community policing, and one of the original commanders in the Gardena Police Department's district policing program. Since 1993, he has worked almost every position within the department, from a civilian jailer to becoming the 11th Gardena Police Chief in 2019. I bring you Chief Safel. Good evening, Gardena. I am your police chief, Mike Safel. As you know, I became chief in 2019, and a lot has changed since that time. On behalf of the men and women of the Gardena Police Department, I want to thank our community for all the support, cooperation, and enthusiasm you have shown over the last year and a half. It has been an unprecedented, challenging time in history. But we've also seen some of the most selfless, cooperative, helpful, and kind acts in our community during this same time. Neighbor helping neighbor and community groups helping the community. All of these acts of kindness can be, in my department, a great sense of hope for the future. So thank you, Gardena, for showing all of us why it's great to be in Gardena. So let's talk about some of the things 
that have happened over the past year with respect to your police department. Last year, due to retirements and other reductions in staff, we had the opportunity to replace over 14 police officers, two full-time professional staff, and four part-time staff. In addition, we replaced seven sergeants, two lieutenants, and two captains. So with that, I would like to introduce you to my executive staff. Captain Todd Fox is responsible for the Sports Services Division, which includes the Detective Bureau, our Special Enforcement Unit, Administrative Services, Risk Management, and Professional Standards. Captain Vince Osorio is responsible for the Operations Division, which includes Patrol, our District Policing Program, the Traffic Bureau, SWAT, our Volunteer Program, and our Explorers, among others. Our district lieutenants are Lieutenant Chris Cuff, who is responsible for District 1, Lieutenant Mark Thompson, who is responsible for District 2, and Lieutenant Eric Lee, who is responsible for District 3. Lieutenant Brock serves as our Administrative Services Bureau Lieutenant, and Lieutenant Mike Sargent is our Detective Bureau Lieutenant. During this past year, even with COVID restrictions, we pressed forward with our district policing efforts by holding a series of events. From our community education series back in early 2020, teaching our community about active shooter events or the harmful effects of vaping to visits at convalescent homes. And when the COVID restrictions were set in place, we continued our efforts through Zoom with virtual events such as thank yous to our essential workers and remembrances for, of our fallen GPD officers. We conducted our GPD ride tour, which placed our officers out on bicycles to connect with our community. We participated with our Gardena Community Emergency Response Team in educational parades, and we held fraud prevention training for our second time around club. And let us not forget about our annual Gardena PD pancake breakfast. We continued forward with that event, making it a drive-through, and we did it for no cost as a thank you to the community for pressing forward during such a challenging time. Our district lieutenants conducted over 80 district meetings via Zoom in 2020. We, like all of you, did not let the pandemic stop us from showing everyone why Gardena is such a special place. As an update to our crime rate in 2020, we had decreases from the previous year in most categories, except for theft, which included auto theft. As we discussed in many of our district meetings, because of the changes in the environment, theft was on the rise in 2020. This included catalytic converters. This is why we sponsored events such as our Etch and Catch event, where we teamed with a local auto shop to engrave identifiable numbers on our resident's catalytic converter, which will enable us to locate a victim and assist in the prosecution of these catalytic converter thieves. In addition, we partnered with our Recreation and Human Services Department on a free document shredding event to ensure that our residents had the opportunity to protect their personal information. Now, one of the highlights of the Guardian Police Department was a three-part listening tour, which we conducted in July of 2020. Now, since 2007, listening to the community's needs and wants has been the foundation of the Guardian Police Department's community policing program known as District Policing. It has been our police department's flagship program for bringing customizable quality law enforcement services to Gardena. The idea of relying on our district policing model and the strong relationships in the community, as well as the national demand for racial justice and concerns about inequity, served as the catalyst for the listening tour. The goal of this effort was to gather ideas from our community about policing, policy, and procedures from each of the three geographic policing districts. The pandemic prevented the department from hosting in-person events. Therefore, Zoom video conferencing was used to facilitate the meetings. 11,000 flyers were hand delivered to residences throughout the city and many social media platforms promoted the event as well. Each live tour event lasted approximately two hours. The topics ranged from community policing to training to use of force and national issues. Over 200 residents participated, providing input on how they wanted to be policed. Overwhelmingly, comments from the community reflected a desire for the police department to begin hosting neighborhood watch meetings again virtually. In short, there are five main themes that came from the listening tour. 
restart district policing, increase officer visibility. Our community definitely wants to know the officers working in their neighborhood. Increase training and no defunding. From these ideas, we developed the Gardena Policing Services Enhancement and Community Trust Initiative to serve as a strategic plan for our department. This plan focuses on six areas, police service delivery, training and policy involvement, succession planning, innovation technology, employee wellness, empowerment and accountability, and last, community engagement. Now we have made progress on our initiative. Some of those include, in 2020, we prohibited the use of the carotid control hole. We've contracted with a medical director to provide in-house training for first aid, basic life support, AEDs, our nasal Narcan program, and tactical emergency medicine training for our officers. We have updated our use of force policy and provided training to be in compliance with Bill 392 and Bill 230. We added an inclusion statement to our manual policy and procedure, which states that our department is committed to fostering a diverse and inclusive working environment where we value and develop employees of all backgrounds and experiences. We firmly believe collaboration among team members with varied pasts and perspectives generates more incisive and deeper insights that better serve our citizens, businesses, and employees. We've conducted a request for proposal for a force simulator to better train our officers in de-escalation. We have extended our community outreach to groups to assist with our future recruitment efforts. We continue with mental health training, de-escalation training, and cultural competency training. Our Gardena Juvenile Justice and Intervention Program has continued to thrive even during the pandemic. Since its inception in 2015, GGIP has served almost 700 youth between the ages of 11 and 17 from our Gardena community. Our Gardena Mental Health Evaluation Team has also continued to serve through the pandemic. Homelessness and mental health issues are encountered by our officers on a daily basis. Having a team to assist and specialize in this area is an invaluable asset to the department as well as the community. Our Gardena Police Foundation continue to distribute scholarships to students in our community to help them pursue their academic goals in college. Since 2015, our Gardena Police Foundation has given 27 student scholarships at over $108,000. And most recently, our department achieved gold status as part of the Lexapol Policy Recognition Program. Lexapol is the leading policy and training platform for public safety agencies. The program recognizes agencies that consistently and effectively disseminate policies to officers, issue timely policy updates as laws change, and ensure officers are trained on policies. I ask that all of our communities stay in contact with our messaging on our social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter or through your district lieutenant. We continue to have district meetings on a regular basis and more than happy to listen to any concern. We are eager to help. As we always say, if you see something, say something. Lastly, it's fireworks season. Remember, illegal fireworks are always illegal. Illegal fireworks are the ones that fly in the air or explode. And all safe and sane fireworks can only be used on July 4th from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. We will be out this year enforcing fireworks regulations. So be safe, follow the rules, and enjoy your 4th of July. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Now back to Mayor Serta. Thank you, Chief, for such an informative presentation. I look forward to seeing the Guardian of Policing Services Enhancement and Community Trust Initiative at work. The achievements accomplished from our staff is truly impressive. Here's a quick highlight of our staff at work.
I'm amazed at all that they have accomplished within the last year. As we turn our focus to the future and our road to recovery, Gardena has a long-standing recognition of being fiscally responsible, relying on various revenue streams to balance our annual operating budget. Prior and during the pandemic, we took measures to reduce the financial impact to prepare for the post-pandemic recovery and the economic slowdown. Thanks to the support of the community in March of 2020, residents of Gardena passed Measure G, which helped keep sales tax money in Gardena. This increase is estimated to provide seven to $8 million per year in revenue to help continue to improve our great city. One of the most significant financial initiatives that was adopted was the issuance of a $101 million bond. This allowed the city to refinance its unfunded accrued liability, lowering interest rates from 7% to 3.5. This effectively saved the city $51 million in just over a 19-year period. We also adopted an unfunded accrued liability policy that will address future additional unfunded liability. This will help us absorb the impact of revenue loss and avoid future staff layoff and help maintain and hopefully increase service for our community. The city is also eligible for the American Rescue Plan, which will provide the city up to 15 million in reimbursement from now until December 2024. Early guidelines for eligible use of this funding include support public health expenditures, addressing negative economic impacts, replacing public sector revenue loss, and investing in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. As we receive more information, we will work to create programs that will continue to support our community. Early in the year, we received CARES funding to provide assistance to our business and residents. I'm happy to say that 100% of the 660,000 in funding received went to provide direct support to small businesses and residents in the form of rental and utility relief and nutrition assistance. If you've been impacted by COVID-19, I encourage you to contact our Human Services Department as we still have funding available for rental, utility, and nutrition assistance. This year, the city was faced with implementing a COVID-19 financial mitigation plan. The plan reduced our budget from 8.9 million from what was originally adopted. The plan included a hiring freeze, furloughs, layoffs, and reduction in services. As we reach the end of the fiscal year, I'm happy to report we were projected to be under budget by 1.7 million. One of the biggest contributors to the reduction in expenditures was the issuance of a pension obligation bond. Refinancing our pension obligations saved us just over $1.3 million this year and approximately 51 million in a 19 year period. COVID-19 closures also had a noteworthy impact on our city's revenue. One of the most affected was our car club revenue, which saw a drop of over $1.5 million. Car club revenue is one of the top five revenue sources, which includes sales and use tax, property taxes, vehicle license fee, and utility users tax. Those five sources contribute just over 60% of our general fund revenues. Our sales tax was relatively unaffected this year by the pandemic. This is attributed to Measure G, which will keep nearly seven million in sales tax money in Gardena. Had you not approved the measure, the city would have greatly felt the impact of reduced sales tax revenue due to COVID-19. Our revenues are projected to be 11.4 million over what was projected at the start of July, 2020. This is greatly attributed to Measure G and the American Relief Plan. So what does this mean going forward? The finance team has introduced its proposed budget for 2021 through 2022 fiscal year, which will be brought to council on June 22nd for adoption. Our budget holds steady with the revenue and expenditures balancing with a minimal surplus. The increase in expenditures is mainly due to the lifting of furloughs and increase in capital improvement projects for our community. Our future looks bright. I'm excited to announce the reopening of City Hall on Tuesday, June 29th. City Hall will be open by appointment only to help assist individuals in person. As restrictions continue to be lifted, we will offer more in-person services, activities, events, and resume youth and adult sports. We're also excited to announce the return of the city's largest event, the 18th annual Gardena Jazz Festival held at Raleigh Park, scheduled for August 22nd. We're excited to welcome you back. 
As we come to the end of our presentation, I want to take a moment to remember all the 115 lives lost in the city of Gardena and the over 3.5 million lives lost around the world due to COVID-19 pandemic. We share in grieving all those who have and continue to endure pain, illness, and death from this disease. Our city also experienced loss with the passing of four of our team members this past year, Kiana Jenkins and Roger Phillips from the Transportation Department, as well as Roy Shido and David LeBeau from the Public Works Department. We will miss them dearly. Thank you all for joining us for tonight's event. I want to thank you all for coming together to continue to make Gardena the best place to live, work, and play. While this year we may not be in person together, we remain united in our hopes for a brighter future. We will continue working on more policing, accountability, and transparency, and greater equality for all. Together, we are stronger. Good night. Mm -hmm.